first parts I want to worry about are the header and the footer. These are the easy parts. Let's get these out of the way right away. So go into source and under app, we're going to go app component.ts. And this is where we're going to do most of our work is the app component and all the generated components we have. So let's remove this. And then I'll add a comment here for header. And then the router outlet is where all of our pages get output. So we'll keep that there. The Angular CLI did that for us when we started our app with routing and uh, routes get injected here. So that is going to be where our home page or about page or contact page, all that gets put out. And we're going to have a footer here. And notice I'm using HTML comments inside of our template. So here, let's use the Bulma classes. We have div class navbar. And then inside of that, we're going to have the logo. And I like, really like commenting out my HTML div class navbar brand. And if you're wondering where all these classes are coming from, you can go to Bulma. Let's go take a look. Bulma.io under docs, under components. And this is just because I've used it so much that I know where most things are, but you can browse around overview, modifiers, columns, layout form elements, but components where we have our nav bar. So we'll open up the nav bar. We'll take a look, nav bar brand. And there's good examples here, and you can just copy and paste whatever you need. So if we go down nav bar menu, this is kind of the whole menu. Uh, let's go a little farther. Here we go. This is closer to what we need. So you can show that code. And it's a little bit extensive since there's drop downs and these two buttons on the right. We don't need all of that. So we're going to go over here, nav bar brand. And then we're going to say A class, nav bar item. And then here we're going to say my logo goes here. Let's take a look at our app. All right, that works. And let's split this out to the right again, to the left, close that sidebar. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a dark background to this. So let's say is dark. And that's how Bulma does things. It uses the is prefix to kind of modify. So there's is dark. Now let's worry about the footer. We're gonna say footer dot footer. And then inside of this, we're gonna have a container. And let's give it some content has text centered. These are some Bulma classes to get a little bit better styling. We're gonna say P class made with, and let's do a heart emoji, heart. Uh, let's do made with love by Chris from scratch. And there's our footer. So notice the Bulma classes of footer and nav bar make it pretty easy to get what we need for our application. Now that's great and all, but as we start building out our application and we start adding more, let's say we add links here and we'll go links and then it just starts to get larger and larger and maybe we have a drop down. our app component starts to get really hairy and kind of confusing to read. So the way things work in Angular and a lot of these modern JavaScript frameworks and libraries is we're gonna build out components for each part of our application. So let's build out a header component and a footer component. Now, normally you would go in and create a new folder, new file and say header.component.ts and then you would register it in the app module and then you would build out this component decorator, build out your home component class or sorry, header component class. But the Angular CLI does this all for us. So we're gonna go open this up. I'm gonna open up a new terminal here. And yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so let's do ng generate component header. And as soon as I press enter, check this out, we're going to create a header.component file. And then we're going to update app module so that app module knows that this header component exists. So let's close the terminal. And let's save this. We'll close that. So we'll open up this header, header component.ts. Now selector is here, app dash header, we have our template for header works. And then we have our header component, which is the JavaScript part of this. So that's our whole component, right? Template, styles, JavaScript class, and then custom selector. And this is very similar, loosely based off of uh, web components. That's kind of how things work. Selector, template, styles, JavaScript. 
our app module under declarations, which is where you put new components. We have our header component and the Angular CLI did the import for us as well. That's really great because that's a lot of boilerplate that we don't have to worry about all these imports, declarations for header component, And then now let's go into app component. Now, since the Angular application knows that we have this header component registered, that's because it is registered in app module, we can start using that custom selector. So if we go app header, and then let's cut that out for now, save, notice header works. And that's what's coming from our header component in the template. Very nice. So now let's paste this into the header component template, save that. All right, here we go. Now our Header works again, but if we go look at app component, we just have this app header custom selector. Now this is really cool because if this was a reusable component, we could use this in multiple places. So we can say app header, and then let's do app header down here. Oh, check it out, we have two, but let's move that down. And that's the cool thing about components is reusability. Instead of having to copy that HTML text everywhere we go, we could just put it in a custom component and then use that component wherever. So let's go ahead and create the footer as well. So we'll save, open this back up, ng. And I wanna show you a trick here that's really cool. Instead of generate, you can just say g component footer. So g is an alias for generate. And my screen is getting a little cluttered here. Let's take a quick detour. I'm gonna close this status bar. So we'll close that. And we'll close the activity bar, which is that giant bar on the left. Okay. So now we have our footer component. It is registered in app module and we can use it. So let's cut this all out. We'll say app footer. And then under footer, footer components, let's paste that under the template. And everything works the exact same, but our now our app component is very clean. App header, router outlet, app footer. I want to take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're going to do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are going to be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant. Let's zoom out a little. Okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services. And Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator. And a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here. We're just adding a decorator here. So this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS code terminal. Now my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. 
And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left, close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even gonna need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are gonna get output to. And we're gonna say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save, and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack dev server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line, and then we serve it with one line, and then we can just start working, and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript if you're not sold on TypeScript. And I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? Well, you can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use and here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save. Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay, well, let's try a component. Okay, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal, no errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use component? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is gonna be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module, we're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this. Close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app.